and gentlemen, before we begin tonight's event, I'd like to uh, take a very short moment to acknowledge uh, some of our friends uh, from different levels of government joining us here tonight, uh, who is in a really <laughs> short time frame. She, she has to be back in Ottawa very soon, but we thank her for joining us here. We have our MP from Trinity Spadina, MP Olivia Chow joining us here tonight. Thank you, it means a lot. And we thank you. And uh, from Scarborough Asian Court, we have our MPP member of Provincial Parliament, uh, MPP Sue Wong, with us tonight. Thank you. And I would like to also thank uh, Councillor Kristen Wong Tam, uh, Ward 27, from the City of Toronto, joining us here tonight. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> 
of the Mokten incident, an event that the Imperial Japanese Army used as an, as an excuse to invade and occupy the Shangyang province and eventually to fully invade China. It happened on the September 18th, 1931. That's why you keep hearing the words 918 in Chinese repeated in the lyrics of the song. Once again, good evening everyone and thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Joseph, one of the directors of Toronto Alpha. And uh, on behalf of Toronto Alpha, we welcome everyone. I am a Chinese Canadian who came from Hong Kong and learned of the Nanking Massacre when I was a teenager in Hong Kong. And I'd like to say a few words in Chinese. Come to the show, I'm very happy to be here. 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 And my name is Yuko Sorano, and with Joseph, we're going to be the MC for tonight. The Nanki Massacre, as a person growing up in Japan, I've always remembered it as a part of history that divides us apart. It's a scar that has not been healed in a long shared history in Asia. For that reason, I'm particularly honored to be here today with you for this very important event that brought all of us together in one spirit. Minasama, 本日はこの75周年南京虐殺追悼集会にお祭りいただき誠にありがとうございます。Thank you, thank you, Yuko. It, it, it's my honor to MC with you, and I'm sure everyone will feel the same. It means a lot. And for the same reason, before we introduce our first speaker, we'd like to thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this evening. Because when other people tell you to look away, for you do not know these victims personally. You did not listen. Because when other people tell you to let go and let bygones be bygone, you did not listen. Instead, you choose to listen to the voice inside, the voice that echoes with every single suffering soul in different times and different places of the world, the voice that defines us as human. The Toronto Alpha shared that same belief. And like you, we choose to be the voice of the voiceless. Now, please welcome the founding chair of Toronto Alpha, Dr. Joseph Wan. Thank you, Joseph and Yoko. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
would like to welcome all of you to be here tonight. Your spirit has touched me. Despite the forecast and warning of freezing rain and snowstorms, you have taken the courage to come out tonight to be together with us on a very important and significant historical day. 75 years ago today, the Japanese Imperial Army gathered in front of the Nanjing city, then capital of China. A few days later, on December 13, they captured Nanjing, and subsequently, in a short period of six weeks, over 300,000 people were slaughtered. They slaughtered, they were slaughtered in so brutal and barbaric ways that were, they were beyond words, beyond imagination. It is important to remember this history because without the knowledge of the history, without the truth, we would not be able to prevent history from repeating itself. 各位朋友,今天我們要說的是 無論你是男、女、老、幼 the reason why it is important for us to remember this period of history is because of the sheer scale of atrocity, the brutality, the barbaric ways in which people were slaughtered. It was beyond words and beyond imagination. On the average, every 12 seconds, one person was killed in Nanjing. One would think that the Japanese politicians today would regret such an act and come to senses so that this type of barbaric acts would not repeat again. But in Japan, we have seen a lot of denials. The denials happen in such a way that is scary and terrifying. Most recently, the largest political party, the LDP, the Liberal Democratic Party of Japan, openly on its platform, the election platform, announced that they have to revise history. They have to expand military and they have to scrap Article 9, the Peace Constitution of Japan, and they have to put Japan back to honor its name. These all are very terrifying to me, and I see that Japan is going back on the way on the road before the 1930s when it prepares people for invasion of other Asian countries. And that is why it is important for people in the West, for people around the world, to send a message, a clear and loud message to Japan, that we would not let this happen. The world would not let this denial to continue. And that is why the importance of the City Hall Council, the City Council's resolution, the motion to send a very strong message to Japan. And I would like to thank Christian Wong Tan, 
for his for her courage to lead the motion and lead the debate in City Hall. And I would like to make a formal introduction. Uh, Christian, would you come up here? I would like to ask her to tell you why she proposed a motion and why at the beginning the motion or the suggestion of a Nanjing Massacre Memorial Week or Education Week was turned down by the mayor's office. And it's because of action, the action of also Councillor Chin Lee, who have brought the whole council to vote and forced the mayor to change his position. Christine. Thank you very much, Joseph, and thank you for the introduction. You know, the work that Alpha Toronto does is, is uh, important, not just here in Toronto, but it's actually heard around Canada and around the globe. The, uh, the beginning of the story of trying to get the proclamation uh, signed by the mayor in, uh, in the city of Toronto began almost two months ago. And uh, prior to that, for about four months, we've been organizing the photo exhibit which uh, was on display at City Hall from November the 27th to December the 2nd. Um, when we asked the mayor to uh, you know, essentially proclaim that December 9th was the anniversary of the Nanking Massacre, 75th anniversary of that, um, there was resistance. And there was resistance also from the protocol office. And the reason why they denied our request, which I thought was a very simple request, was they said that this was a politically controversial event. And uh, now I can tell you that as a polit political entity that City Hall is, we get admired in all sorts of political controversies. But what I didn't understand was why the Nan King Massacre would be deemed as politically controversial. We know that it is historically, uh, it took place as an event. We are aware that there are documented evidence throughout history uh, there was an international safety zone that was set up in the city of Nanking, and there were many, many foreigners there. People that were not Japanese and that were not Chinese, and they were simply there because of humanitarian or uh, Christian missions, or they're there on business, or they're there uh, belonging to the, to the media. And uh, so it was not going to be refutable that something took place in Nanking. We may have a disagreement over the numbers, 200,000 or 300,000. But that is not the point. The point is that the Nanking Massacre did take place, and that we have one of the largest Chinese-Canadian populations in the city of Toronto, and that the, although there may be some who say that it is politically controversial, I would also argue that it is politically the right thing to do. So for two months, we very quietly and very diligently uh, pers tried to persuade the mayor to change his mind on the proclamation. And the proclamation can only be signed by the mayor of Toronto. So I, as a city councillor, don't issue proclamations. And, uh, and Councillor Chin Lee, who is working with me on this endeavor, also do not issue proclamations. And uh, what happened is, although we offered the mayor books, including the, the groundbreaking work of Iris Chang and the Rape of Nan King, we offered him DVDs. We offered him all sorts of counter uh, literary materials that were out there. Uh, research materials by uh, historical universities, uh, including in, uh, information that was gathered by the University of Toronto, and, uh, and there was no response from the mayor's office. And when I spoke to the mayor uh, personally uh, in the November council meeting, he said to me, Councillor, it's politically controversial, I don't want to do it. Um, so he forced our hand, unfortunately, and I had to go to the city council, which is something we don't do. So proclamations are not issued by city council. Proclamations come through the protocol office to the mayor's office. And ultimately, the proclamations uh, are at the discretion of the mayor. And Mayor Ford, uh, and not to his credit this time, but he, he just refused. He refused to listen, which I think was just very disrespectful. But he also refused to acknowledge that, that this was something that was important to a very large constituency in the city of Toronto, and that's what I found very disheartening. But, you know, Councillor Chin Lee and I said, you know, this is so important to our community, we need to forget about the mayor. This is important enough to our community that we need to go to city council and break the protocol, which is allowing the protocol office and the mayor to have this, the final say. 
and we, we move the motion on the floor of City Council. And we try to introduce this motion on the floor of City Council, and at first it was rejected by the Speaker, who is Speaker Nunziata, and she said to me, this is not urgent. And I said to Speaker Nunziata, Speaker, the events are taking place across the GTA at the first week, the second week of December. It is urgent. And this day is November 28th that I'm having this conversation with the Speaker. And, uh, and only with the intervention of Councillor Peter Milchin, who worked very, very hard, I must say. And Peter Milchin is on the Mayor's Executive. And I tell you this story because I think it's important that the community understands what we had to do to get the Nanking um, proclamation. But Peter Milchin intervened and he said to the mayor's office, you have a very large Chinese voting bloc and this will not look favorably upon you if you don't do this. And then he spoke to Councillor Nunziata who, who I think then said, okay fine, we'll allow them to introduce this, this item. And so we got it onto the floor of council on November the 28th. But before the council vote on 2 p.m., we held a press conference in the rotunda right outside the photo exhibit. And who came out to the press conference were obviously the media. So all of a sudden, because of the mayor's denial of the, of the Nanking proclamation, it became a much more public event than we would normally have had attention to. Because the proclamation could have been signed very quietly and would have just been issued off. So in my hand is a proclamation that's still not signed by the mayor, unfortunately. Um, although the proclamation did pass on November the 28th, and there was great media coverage from Omni News to all the our major Chinese dailies, including the National Post, and there was some coverage in our online blogs. But what was really so tragic about it is that it really took too long. And so even though justice is being denied to the, to the victims of the Nanking Massacre, justice again was denied at City Council until Council took the vote, and the vote was unanimous. So what I have in my hand is a proclamation from the City of Toronto, still not signed. And I hope to have the signature on it um, very soon. And I will be able to send it to Alpha Toronto, and to, as well as to all the other organizations that have invited me and other councillors to speak about the Nan King Massacre to commemorate the 75th anniversary so that they can have a record that the City of Toronto acknowledges this historical event and thinks that it's important to, ex uh, to express its understanding and its compassion to the victims and to ensure that this never happens again. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Next, I would like to introduce a very good friend of mine, Olivia Chow. And you certainly remember five years ago in 2007, Olivia moved a motion in the House of Commons called Motion 291. It's a private member's bill. And that bill eventually passed on exactly the same date, November 28, 2007, with four comfort women victims coming from the Netherlands, China, Korea, and the Philippines. They gave testimonials in Toronto and also in Ottawa for a special parliamentary hearing. And the next day on November 28, 2007, the whole House of Commons voted unanimously to urge Japan to acknowledge the facts of history about the Kung woman and make a formal apology to the victims. So I would like to uh, call upon Olivia Chow to come up to say a few words over there. Crime against humanity is not just important to the Chinese Canadian community or to China or to Korea. Crime against humanity is important to all humankind. And we need to understand that no matter where we are. It is important that we face the truth. No matter it's 75 days, 75 years, 750 years, we have to remember what happened in Nanjing, in the entire Asia. Whether it's the murder, the brutality, the crime against women and children, the rape and the pillage. We have to remember so that history will not repeat itself again. Truth is important. 
If we don't face the truth, history will repeat itself. I'm fearful and yet hopeful. If you look at what is happening now with those islands, Delaware Islands or fishing islands or whichever way you call them, with the military exercise around those islands, if we do not teach other people that don't understand this part of history, that this part of Second World War, peace may not last. So we will not forget. And it is easy to succumb to anger, to succumb to hatred, to say that that kind of brutality cannot be forgiven. But that's not who we are. We believe that we prefer to love life. We prefer to say that all life is important. Whether it's Japanese life, Korean life, Chinese life, or Jews, it doesn't matter. That all life is important. We love life. And that's why peacemaking is so much harder than making war. But we are here as an ambassador for peace. That's why we remember. That's why we need to face the truth. That's why we will not despair. That's why we, when we light the candle, we are saying that when we come together, we have the power and the faith and the hope that we will come out of darkness, we will come out of anger and despair, that we will have peace, that we will teach the second generation and the third generation and all those people that don't know the history of Comfort Woman, don't know the history of what happened to Nanjing, to the 300,000 people that died and to the millions that died during the Sino-Japanese War. We will teach, we will be the ambassador for peace, we will not forget, we will honor those that have passed away by believing that when we come together, we have the power to make change. Thank you for inviting me to share this moment with you. Be better and be better, but I guess as a society, we actually owe the educators even more, more than we realize. So please welcome an educator uh, with Facing History and Director of Toronto Alpha, Ms. Margaret Wells. Hello. I'd like to mention three reasons why I think it's so important that we are all here this evening. First of all, as a first-generation Canadian of Irish descent, I believe strongly that atrocities and human rights abuses committed against people anywhere in the world need to be acknowledged. Secondly, as someone who's had the privilege to take part in the Alpha study tours to China and Korea, I feel that I honor the uh, memory of the victims and also respect the work of the survivors by remembering what happened 75 years ago today. And finally, I think as an educator, I know that History and memory and education are very deeply intertwined with each other. And it is crucial as Canadians that we support our students in understanding how a group like the soldiers in the Japanese Imperial Army were trained to see other human beings as not being human, as being subhuman, and how that training was so significantly central to the atrocities that were committed. We need to make sure that our students understand this so that they are very alert to this same sort of education happening anywhere in the world. And I guess finally I want to add that having had the opportunity to go with Alpha to Japan and meeting some activists who in some cases are, have actually put their own lives in jeopardy by their work to try to preserve peace and to remember this history, which is of course much harder if it's the dark side of their own history. I want to um, respect and honor those people by what we're doing here tonight. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Margaret. And at this moment, uh, Dr. Wong would introduce our following guests. Thank you, Joseph. I'm very honored to introduce a very good friend of Toronto Alpha, someone who, have, who we had met back in 2009 when we led an Ontario Educator delegation to Japan. Tamaki Mashoka was born in Osaka in Japan. Beginning about 25 years ago, she has been trying to find out the truth about the Nanjing Massacre. She is now probably the world's most authoritative person, knowing what actually had happened in Nanjing 75 years ago. Because for the last 25 years, she has gone to Nanjing every single year. And not only once a year, but altogether, she has gone to Nanjing over 80 times in the last 25 years. She has interviewed over 300 survivors. But more important than that, she has interviewed over 250 Japanese veterans who actually committed the crime, who actually fought in Nanjing. She has documented so much about Nanjing Massacre that nobody would be able to deny or dispute. And today, we're very pleased that Tamaki could fly to North America after visiting San Diego, Edmonton, New Jersey, and now finally to Toronto. And in two days' time, uh, Hamaki and I will try to Hong Kong to join the Hong Kong conference on the same topic that we are here today. So please do join me in welcoming Hamaki to come to North America. do this work in Toronto because nobody threatened me, nobody threatened us, and you are all supporting us. But for Tamaki working in Osaka in Japan, after she has written many books published in Japanese and Chinese, and also she filmed, she did, she made a documentary about what had happened in Nanjing, called the torn memories of Nanjing. She has been attacked, she has been threatened, she has been intimidated by the ultra-nationalists, by the right-wing extremists in Japan. She was called names, my Kok Chan. She is not Japanese. All the such names, she was intimidated in her school, in her home, over the phone. And she still upholds justice. She still wrote what she heard from the veterans, what she heard from the survivors. And today, she continued her crusade to make sure that Japanese understand what actually had happened during the Nanjing Massacre in 1937. It is that courage that touches us, that moves us, that we think that there is hope that we have a lot of Japanese friends who work alongside with many people outside of Japan to make sure that everybody understand what had happened. And on that basis, we could find peace and harmony among all the people and hopefully a choice of like Nanjing never, never happened to anyone. Thank you very much, Nanaki. I was here two years ago in Toronto and met many of you here. I also met some of you in Nanking and it's been a pleasure to be back in here in Toronto. え、南京大学卒の歴史事実を明らかにするというこの私の長年続けてきました活動、このトロントでもニュージャージーでも、そしてサンティエゴでもエンジンとの本当にたくさんの人たちが私と共に同じ仕事をしてくださるということで、本当
my uh, work in past years. I'm very happy to have support from you in Toronto, in San Diego, in Edmonton, and in, in, in New Jersey. Uh, thank you. It's been 75 years since the Nankin Massacre. え、先ほどえ、トロントの友人たちが、え、皆さん方が言われていたように日本では本当に受け入れがつまりえ、ライトウィング、受け入れの勢力がはびこって私たち自身運動はもちろんしにくいですが、活動はしにくいですが、南京の、サバイバー、被害者の皆さん、そして中国全土に広がる侵略戦争の被害者の皆さん、苦しめております。As As my colleagues in Toronto mentioned and some of the speakers mentioned, the Japanese society is seeing a more and more right-wing inclination. And we as activists to continue our work has become a lot more difficult. And to add to this, the victims and survivors in Nanking and all the survivors in all over China have been disheartened and been pain and their heart been torn apart. In Japan, I've interviewed over 250 war veterans and in Nankin over 300 survivors. Based on the testimonies of these victims, survivors and the war veterans, they're having cases where the incident exactly matched in its location, the time, and that by research shows that Nanki massacre is an undeniable fact. え、私は南京大学札また日本の侵略戦争を知らない。つまり日本政府が知らせないんですけれども、知らない若者たちに歴史を伝えていきます。パネル展や本を書いたり、そして映画を作ったりして、私は必ず歴史事実を日本の人た
fact, he made a very valuable documentary called Porn Memories of Nanjing. After the video, shortly afterwards, we will begin the committee forum. I hope all of you will stay behind and watch this documentary. It's very valuable. You would not want to miss it. And I also want to let you know that Toronto Alpha is now working with Tamaki to try to translate her work into English. If the work is only written in Japanese and Chinese, it would never come to the West. It is very important for her work, such an important piece of work, to be translated into English and published in North America. Toronto has pledged our support and our work to make it happen. Next one, I would like to introduce Mr. Chen, who came all the way from New Jersey to Toronto. Look at him, he looked like 60, 70, probably my age. <laughs> but on the other hand, he is close to 90. Mr. Chen was born in Nanjing in 1923. When the Japanese Imperial Army captured Nanjing, he was 14. He personally witnessed what had happened to his family and other people. He is coming here to share his testimonials what he has seen, what he has heard during the Nanjing Massacre. And I would like you to join me in welcoming our very beloved Mr. Chen to come to Toronto. And Mr. Don Tao, New Jersey Alpha Chairman and President to come to Toronto as well. Thank you very much. My name is Chu Ye Chang, C H U hyphen Y E H C H A N G. I was born in 1923. I'm the year of the plane. Seventy-five years ago, I personally experienced the 19th massacre, and tonight I would like to give you a short report. On uh, December 13, 1937, uh, Japanese army flew three different lines started attacking Nanjing. 可是他为了要威吓中国的军民，他就展开了大屠杀。And then they started the massacre of the Chinese uh, people, including the civilians. 现在有人在争，到底你杀了多少人呢？所以现在我们根据联合国的统计，它是在一九四六年八月。到一九四七年二月这个期间，一共日本人在六个礼拜之中杀了中国人三十四万到四十万人。Sometimes there are people arguing how many people were killed. He does not want to use his own estimate. He's using the estimates determined by the United Nations. Uh, the War Crimes Investigation Committee uh, under the United States Nation set up a Far East International Tribunal Court that met in 1946, uh, August to 1947, February, and they determined that during the six-week period of the 19th Massacre from December 13th to about the end of January, uh, they estimated 340,000 to 400,000 Chinese were killed. This is at that time, he was with a family of eight people. His parents, his great-grandmother, not his grandmother, his great-grandmother, his two younger brothers and two younger sisters, all together there were eight of them. 
。我的父亲在江宁县政府会计师工作，所以我们的家庭来说还是可以算是小康之家。His father worked as an accountant in the Jinling County Government as an accountant. 可是，在日本人来了以后，我们家里面就非常害怕。After the Japanese came, the whole family, just like all the other Chinese, became very afraid. 那时候日本飞机轰炸的很厉害，所以我们就想逃到江白去，就是过了长江到浦口去。想坐京浦铁路的车子，能够向西边去跑。At that time, the Japanese、uh, airplanes were bombing、uh, pretty furiously, so a lot of people wanted to leave. So, including their family, they wanted to go across the Yangtze River and go to the across the river and、uh, to catch the Jinpu Railroad. 我们到了京浦路，我们的老家。希望我们老家的人能够帮助我们一点钱，我们可以买火车票坐京浦铁路走。可是他们说我们也没有办法，我们现在也在逃，没有办法帮你们。After they cross the river to the other side, uh, get near the Jinpu railroad station, there are some、uh, relatives living on、uh, in that area. They are hoping that the relatives can also help them. But their relatives were also in the process of、uh, uh, uh, running away, so they were not able to help them. 那时候逃难的人太多了，飞机票贵的不得了，而且你买不到。我们没有钱，怎么能够只好在乌衣镇上待下来 ？At that time, there were too many people running away, too many refugees, and the airplane tickets were just too expensive, too expensive for them. So they were trying to catch、uh, by train ticket. 那时候日本人封锁每一个地方，所以你要想逃也没有办法逃。那么我们只好在乌衣镇这里啊，就遇到了日本的工兵部队。Let me add a sentence because he skipped the sentence.、Uh, they were trying to buy train tickets, but the train tickets were,、uh, were all full. The only train tickets were available were the very expensive train tickets, which were too expensive. For them to、uh, afford, so then they were not able to catch a train to go west. Because all the many of the other people also do. So they have to settle down in the countryside. 虽然是七十五年前的事情了，可是我们做一个振臂起敌的见证人，如果不出来说话的话，我们对不起我们死掉的人。可是出来说话。对我们自己来说，一种很大的痛苦。Although it just occurred seventy-five years ago,、um, it's very painful for him to come out and testify.、Uh, I know personally from dealing with him, it's extremely painful. But however, he believes that the cause is so great that if he doesn't testify, then he doesn't.、Um, 我们在乌衣镇的时候。Okay. Uh, And he cannot.、Um, he did not pay enough respect to those who died. 遇到了日本工兵部队，这个工兵部队他的领章是紫红色的，他们就抓我们去替他搬东西。At that time, there's also an engine, a Japanese engineering troop, a group of Japanese engineering troop. Because what happens that? The railroads was destroyed many times, so they have to reconstruct the railroads and the highways and so on, so that they can also go west and chase after the national、uh, Chinese national army. 正好这个工兵部队的部队长啊，经过那里就看到，怎么一个小孩子在这里搬东西呢？就叫我过去。And the officers of this engineering troop,、uh, one time saw him. Uh, what, uh, he and his father were、uh, drafted to、uh, move. Material and machinery and so on. And one time, this engineering troop、uh, officer saw him and then asked him to come over. He said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 14 years old." He said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 14 years old." He said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 14 years old." He said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 14 years old." He said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 14 years old." He said, "How old are you?" He said, "I'm 14 years old." He said, "How
He asked, "You know how to speak English?" He said, "I know a little." 他说好，那你就跟着我好了。He said, "Good. Then why don't you follow me?" 他说我有一个孩子，跟你一样大，他就拿照片出来给我看。他说这是我的儿子，也是十四岁。He said. He has a son who's also 14 years old, about the same height as you. So he took out a picture from his wallet and sold it. He 待我非常好，就叫我跟着他一起吃饭。He treated him very well, asked him to come and eat meals with him. 他教我日本 I U V O， 也教我唱日本歌。He taught him some Japanese and also taught him to sing some Japanese songs. 我到现在还会唱日本国歌，还会唱日本军歌，还记得的。Even now, he still remember how to sing some of those Japanese songs. 但是我不晓得唱的什么东西。But he did not know what he was singing. He does not sing. He does not know the words. 可是，在除夕过了有一天的夜里面，有一个武长，就是说班长嘛，他就带着几个士兵。传到我的家里面去。One time near the end of the year, 1937, ah,、uh, five Japanese soldiers, including one of the group leaders, subgroup leaders under this officer, came to their house. 把我父亲跟我赶出去。Asked him and his father to leave the house. 我父亲说：“那你赶快去请部队长来帮忙，好吧？” His father said, "Please go get the officer. Ask him to come." Because he saw the sense there will be danger. 等到我把部队长叫醒了，醒来一看，家里面糟糕了。After he went and woke up the officer, got him to come to their house, then they saw what happened. 我的八十岁的太叔祖已经给他们弄死在床上了。His eighty-year-old great grandmother was already raped and then killed. Full of blood. 床上都是血迹。Full of blood. 我的母亲和我的妹妹也都被日军强奸了。His mother and his younger sister, eleven years old, were also raped and full of blood also and fainted. 这部队长在禁止这个这些士兵做坏事的时候，我就跟着爸打架了。When the officer started scolding the, the five Japanese soldiers, he was also very upset. He used one of the curse words that he knew. And yell out at them, which means you're wild beast. This officer came over and hit me on the head. And one of the group leaders, the group leader, came over and really hit him hard on his face and knocked him down to the ground. So now my left ear is blind. Because of that, 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 my left ear is blind. So the officer told him, "You bet, you and your family pick him up, and you and your family better leave. If you don't leave, they're going to come back to kill you." The 部队长就把他们带回去了。So the officer took those soldiers away. 那我们找到一个小部门车，就把我的母亲，就先把我的这个太祖把他包起来，然后放在附近一个小庙里面，找到一个空棺材，放在这个棺材里面，找点点东西盖一盖。So they went to a very nearby temple and they found an empty coffin in there. They found coffin. So they put his great grandmother in the coffin and then they also found a, a wheelbarrow. So they put, they put his mother on the little wheelbarrow, then he pulled from the front. His、uh, father pushes from the back and guy in blue belt. 那么到乡下，我们有一个女青的地方叫做唐金子，这个地方我们住了一个月。So in a nearby town, they lived there for about a month outside of Nanjing. 过了一年年以后，我们知道南京城经营交通恢复了，我们就想回去。So after the Chinese New Year, things began to settle down a little bit in Nanjing. So they moved back to Nanjing. 那么到小庙里一看，这个棺材也没有了，可能已经有人把我的太祖母去埋掉了。When they went back to Nanjing, the coffin、uh, to the temple, the coffin still no longer there.、Uh, presumably, maybe somebody has already、uh, buried his great grandmother. 
，那么赶快找个小船渡过长江的时候。So they found a little boat and crossed the Yangtze River. 这看到长江的两岸，四是漂的，一个个肿得像球一样的。So both, uh, in the, in the Yangtze River, the shores of Yangtze River, bodies uh, all over, they are broken up, you know, the water floating like balls. 在过江的时候，就闻到上面的粑粑粥，上面这个烧死尸的臭味，一间一间的传来。When they're crossing the river, there's an upstream island, the Yangtze River, called Baba Zhou, something like that. And the Japanese were burning dead bodies in that little island, and the smell was very, very terrible. So they all like. 那时候要回南京呢，一定要在城外经过一个审查，要领两本证。At that time, in order to return back to Nanjing, you have to go through a guard station. Uh, they have to question you, inspect you, all of that, and then before you can get a permit, then which allows you to go back. You 拿到两本证以后，要经过关口，向日本军要开弓，要恭恭敬敬向他发你的两本证给他看。After you get your permit, then you have to go through an inspection station, and then you have to pay your respect, bow, and so on, and show your permit. 他会摸你的头上，看你头上有没有军帽的印子，然后看你手上有没有打枪的那个痕迹。They, they, among other things, they touch your forehead to see whether there are a marks from、uh, like wearing a Chinese soldier's hat, and then they also touch your fingers to see whether there are calluses from、uh, shooting guns. 那时候很多士兵已经逃不了了，他就换了兵衣，然后警察抓到了以后呢，就。At that time, many of the soldiers also did not have time to escape, couldn't escape, so they uh, uh, disarmed themselves, changed clothes, uh, but uh, if they were discovered, they were taken aside and shot, executed. After he got home, uh, he found out that their home, all the wood, all the doors, windows are gone, they used it to, to burn to it. 我父亲就说：“那你怎么办呢？我们到这个酱油里面去买一点酱菜、豆腐乳，你拿到街上去卖。” So his father said, "How am I going to how we going to support ourselves to live?" So he asked him to go to uh, those uh, stores, factories to buy some fermented tofu, fermented vegetables, so to buy it you know, wholesale and then walk around the streets and try to sell. 正好这个上堂在。叫，因为街上死尸太多了嘛，他就安排的人来抬这个用帆布船这个抬死，找这个死尸去。他们把这个死尸要抬去以后呢，他会给他们一点钱。At that time, there were so many dead bodies, so there was actually a、uh, an agency,、uh, the local government, by an agency associated with funeral house, and、uh, come and try to collect the bodies from all over the city. 抬死尸的人就说：“你可以不可以帮忙？”我说：“可以。”我说：“我会闻这个死尸的味道。”然后我就帮他们去找。They asked him, "Can you help us to find these dead bodies?" He said, "Yes, I can. I have a pretty good smell." 他就分一点钱给我，让我回去可以生活。And then they give him a little bit of money for every dead body he discovered. 这个一直到有春天过去了。差不多，我们三个月的时间挖的尸首啊，有两百多具。啊、uh, ，spring came and during about three month period, uh, he helped to find two hundred bodies. 两百个。对，两百个。Two hundred dead bodies. He didn't say, but he has a very good sense of smell. He can distinguish dead human bodies from dead animal bodies. 一直到美国来了以后，我才。本来心里也很气哈、啊，我想一定要报复。He was very angry and he always wanted to revenge. And then he came to the United States in 1982. 我到了美国来的以后，我就感觉到我们要信耶稣基督啊，要饶恕我们的仇人。He came to the United States and then he became a Christian and then he learned to forgive. 所以。我对我的三个子女，我对我的九个孙辈来讲，我们不要气，但是我们要记。So he tells his three children and his nine grandchildren, 
that we should not hate, but we cannot, we should not forget. We can forgive. He said we can forgive, uh, forgive our enemies, but we cannot for, uh, forget. By the way, Mr. Chang is also a curriculum teacher. And he also hopes that all of us should not forget. Translation. And ladies and gentlemen, we gather here tonight because December 13th, 1937, and the six horrifying weeks after, hundreds and thousands of people were murdered in Nanking. We have just witnessed uh, what uh, Mr. Zhang and uh, Mr. Maki Latsoko uh, told us. And they're all killed by the Imperial Japanese Army. Innocent people were raped and killed. It was certainly one of the darkest times in human history. With a little candlelight in our hands, or with the tears in Nanjing, composed by Jean Emerson a few years ago when she was 13, may the music heal our souls so we can bring hope to build a better world based on love. of those who've fallen and suffered during the Nanking Massacre, should we all stand up to observe the moments of silence? What was committed are crimes against humanity. And every one of us is capable of committing terrible acts against others if we don't learn from the past wrong, if we don't teach our younger generations to learn the values of humanity, as a community member, we are obliged to nurture our younger generations to be a responsible citizen and safeguard justice and peace. 
as a parent, we are obliged to let our children learn what happened. What happened that of their heritage or not. As a human being, we are obliged to retell the stories, to light hope for the hopeless, and to have courage to voice for the voiceless. The remembrance is not just for the past, it is also for the future. Let's hear what our younger generations want and what they want to speak. Here is Mr. John Chu speak. On the New Year's Eve of 1937, at a riverside town in the biting frost of winter, soldiers sought suffering in their home. He wept for his sister, mother, and grandmother. Crossing the street, he crossed the Yangtze River by boat. As parting waves lapped beside you, horrifying you discovered in the water, human cadavers floated like balloons. Several weeks passed when you returned home to nothingness, to a city of ashes, to bullet holes, to bubbage, to blood drops and ransacked shops. You wept for their truth. Because history claims you were victimized, you steadfastly insist to be a survivor. In midst of the brutality inflicted upon your life, an intrepid hope for goodness in the future was born in you. Here is an address, a piece of mail to 300,000 recipients, a lifetime passed in the fog of war. Because history claims you were victimized, you steadfastly insist to be a survivor. In the midst of the brutality inflicted upon your life, an intrepid fighting spirit was born in you. Dearest textbook readers, corporate lawyers, teachers, truck drivers, prime ministers, grocery store cashiers, and sons and daughters. You cannot say to the rain, war rain. You cannot say to the truth, war honesty. You cannot say to the past, less pain. You cannot say to the survivors, less apology. Because history claimed they were victimized, they steadfastly insisted to be survivors. In the midst of the brutality we have heard or read, an intrepid compassion for humanity was born in us. Oftentimes, over these years, we feel an overbearing sense of discouragement from the state of the Japanese government and the dwindling numbers of surviving victims each passing day. But this struggle, born out of determination, marks the, marks the victims insisting on their very survival, but not just of their lives, but of their ideas and messages for the future, for us. This event marks the culmination of a lifetime of hardship and the survival of an idea, an idea that we may never forget the tragedies of war, especially at Nanking. But as important as it is to just remember, we must also never forget to resolve, to provide closure to all the victims and the survivors. This is why we have come together over these long years to memorialize and conclude their story, a story which we wish to have a happy ending. We are the youth, born from different parts of the world, and we came here together tonight to remember and to walk together to achieve a common goal of peace and reconciliation. Thank you very much. On behalf of Toronto Alpha, I want to thank all of you bracing the stormy weather tonight to come out in a solemn ceremony to remember those who perished 75 years ago in Nanjing. Although justice has not served yet, we will never forget. 
And I'm glad to tell you that Chong Tao Alpha has been working very closely with various school boards, PTSD, Catholic, and other public boards in GTA to bring this history into classroom. And there are a lot of young people who have been passionate about this history, continue with the work, and we have seen many of them here tonight. These young people represent our future, our, that this history would not be forgotten. And we are here tonight to pledge our promise to those who die that their pain, their suffering will not be forgotten. And I would like to ask you to remain behind after 15 minutes uh, inter yeah, uh, intermission. Uh, please do come back to this room. We would uh, screen the pond memory of Nan Jane. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you again. And for those who are leaving, uh, Toronto Alpha always requires financial resources, and you could make contributions and donations. The youth ambassadors uh, in front of the stage. Uh, let us know if the media guest needs to take a few more pictures. Please kindly be seated. And if you want to take a break, uh, because we overran a little bit, so maybe we'll cut it short to a 10 minutes break. But we want to remind everyone, as you leave this hall tonight, I'm sure you're going to live as a light to others in, term, in times of darkness. So please kindly give this back to our volunteers. We would like to save it for other events in the future, so we're not wasting uh, resources of this Mother Nature. People okay. here tonight with us, okay, but we need your help in order One, for the world two, to know what happened.